is your radio. This is Dark City Radio. This is your Dark City. 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 This is your Dark City Radio. Good evening, Dark City. Welcome to the Permaculture Show. Well, I'm actually unleashed from my conservatory this evening. I'm in the centre of Birmingham and I've come to meet with Be The Change Social Group. We're at the Heart and Space Wellness Centre in the middle of Birmingham. Um, Be The Change, I think a lot of you may have heard of before. Um, they um, like to positively contribute to the life of the community to enlighten, awaken and educate people to live a healthier, self-sufficient and sustainable lifestyle. Um, so I'm here with Krista from the group. So Krista, if you'd like to say a few words about the group. Hello, um, my name's Krista. I um, set up Heart and Space three years ago. And we're here on a Friday night with Be The Change group. Um, group was set up about a year ago for people just to unite, come together, have open discussions, have speakers, um, and just people share and share knowledge, share skills, and help each other, really. Excellent, excellent. Um, and I believe, so you, you're planning a little bit of gardening stuff and the kind of along the growing your own lines, aren't you? Yeah, we're off to Bearwood High Street tomorrow morning from 10 to about 2 o'clock. And it's about just being the change, making a change to... Um, all the high streets that need a bit of revamp and just making people more aware of, you know, just go and pick some food. So we're there planting fruit and vegetables and flowers and just trying to make the streets a little bit nicer. Yeah, for it's fantastic. Well, as I said, I live around the corner from there, so that's good, good, really good, good news for me. <laughs> Is he going to go along? <laughs> yeah, Plant I am going to come down. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> right. definitely. Right. So that that's in the municipal planters, isn't it, that, up the high street? Yeah, so yeah they're you, all bare. They're they're all empty yeah. and then um, Nick, one of the board members, he's been in discussions with Sandwell Council and they're prepared to sort of help us along the oh, way as well. That, yeah, yeah, that was going to be my next question. So he did, because I know he was talking yeah. about going guerrilla style the last time I spoke to him. So which... Well, so anything he, goes yeah, really well, at um, yeah. um, We are literally, wherever there's land, it's just a case of just planting some seeds, really. Yeah. Getting some seeds about and, you know, just making the place prettier place and more people mm. just become more self-sustainable as well I think that's our mm. biggest message is that well I think things happen yeah to make the big, biggest impact. it's true yeah. it's the small steps and um, I think it's almost a revolutionary act now you know to grow your own it's kind of the biggest um what's the word non um non-violent non yeah. you know uh, I think protest. it's more to do with people um nowadays struggling for money as well mm. but mm. now it's time because food prices have gone up it's like well what's stopping you instead of growing lawns we say we're going yeah. to grow food yeah um and then it just and then educating your own children as well of, you know half the kids these days don't even know what an onion is no. it's like so it helps all around, really. I know. It's frightening. It is frightening. Well, I mean, there's a lot of people these days, I know a lot of guys that listen to this show anyway, that have big issues with money mm -hmm. anyway, and the yeah. use of money, and sort of want to really, you know, rather than challenge the government and fight for these things, just step outside the system and say, you know, we're not asking you to provide us with another way. We're just getting on with it, you know. Um, and there doesn't need to be a conflict there. And I think that's how Be The Change really started and, and got everybody sort of excited about it, was because um, it was a donation-based group. Mm. We weren't asking for people to pay at the door, even if you've got no money. It's a case of just coming along and just meet new people. So there is a lot mm. of lonely people out there as well. Mm. Um, and just meet people, like-minded people, and um, just tell us your background and, and how we can all help each other. Yeah, that's fantastic, actually, because I know there are issues in these circles of 
you know, people giving out this information and charging a lot of money for it and saying you can be enlightened if you've got 500 quid, yeah. you know. And I think that's what I was tired of doing is being at home and talking about things. Why is this Why, why is this happening? Why don't more people know about it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but it wasn't a case of us putting a group together and us ramming it down people's throats. It was mm-hmm. a case of how you can be the change, literally. Mm-hmm. Is, this is the problem, but we wanted to be more of a solutions group. Yeah. Rather than going out there saying the yeah. world is rubbish and you know, yeah, see what's more along those lines. Well, that, yeah, which is exactly. The, the same reason that um, I got into the permaculture because yeah. that's the same, it's solutions you know, yeah. um, and I've been trying to do a very similar thing with the permaculture group that I run of yeah. you know, sort of skill sharing workshops to teach people skills and, and it's fantastic you know. and I think that was the main point was that there's so many small groups doing their own little thing and it's all about all these different groups starting to come together yeah it's yeah. us all uniting and and you know sharing you know how can I mm. help you how can you help me and others yeah yeah well the connections are the most important thing that's another thing in permaculture actually is they say in terms of gardening the edges are the most productive space because that's where roots meet that's where different life forms meet that's where all the energies and everything happens and it's the same nature people. tells us a lot exactly. about <laughs> exactly. human nature yeah well it's true in fact um, we had uh, yes you can get it from Dark City for free Bob that's quite right <laughs> um, the, the talk that we just had earlier um, from Simone Nada was uh, really really interesting because yeah. there were a lot of parallels there between mm-hmm. you know um, what I talk about and um, we should get oh she's gone now isn't she we'll get her back over in a minute for a little chat about what she does but I know she talks very much about observation and energies and vibration. And, um, you know, that's when you observe anywhere, that is really prevalent. I mean, in the garden, I've talked about this in previous shows, you know, um, there's a guy that joins me um, called Bob Earthwise. We've had some long conversations about the observations in the garden and how you can feel the energies and feel the vibrations. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, like, that sort of breathing we were doing earlier and trying to let go of the negative energy, for me, when you're immersed in nature you get that instantly um, you know and it, it is a very meditative uh, thing so um, yeah, yeah and it is that, I think that's the main thing is that people are getting back to nature being with the outdoors mm. this day and age a lot of people sort of you know go to work go home watch TV or spend a lot of time on the computer Mm. just appreciating just being with other people mm. and appreciating nature as well yeah oh it's most def- people are very disconnected mm-hmm. which is why in a lot of ways they can't see what's happening you know actually it's funny because I had uh, a couple on last week who lived in communities in Wales sort of alternative communities and I, I've come up with this pet theory <laughs> that um, you know the Welsh Assembly are a little bit more progressive in terms of government um, in these kind of people who want to establish these communities and live these lifestyles and I kind of had this theory that it's because nature is more in your face in Wales even in the big cities you know you can't get away from that energy and that and I think there's more people connected to it yeah most definitely um, but um yeah, in fact, well, we're here every Friday um, from 7 to about 10. And again, we are here till 11 <laughs> sometimes. Um, and Cotton Space, we also run alternative workshops as well. That's where Sarah comes into it. Um, and just giving people choice, really. Yeah, yeah. And options and, and learning new things and questioning more. Yeah. 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 And and do your research. We don't want to come across as like, oh, this is the way it is, but Mm. this is what we know. Go out there, question it, research it, and and share what you know. Hello. Are you back, Norris? Oh, cool. Thanks, Bob. Hi, yeah. Uh, well, I'm Sarah Page. I have a website called www.helperangel.co.uk. But also, if you go on the Heart and Space website, there's two workshops that I'm doing. 
One is on Sunday, the 2nd of June, uh, starting at 11 o'clock till 3.30. We're doing a Connecting With Your Angels workshop, which, okay, might be a bit of a challenge for some people to believe that there are angels. Um, but in this workshop, it's also about finding tools and techniques to help you deeper connect into yourself as well and to connect with divine energies that basically, you know, there is so much we don't see that does exist. We only see a very small fraction of what into say the Empire State Building in New York we only see a grain of sand of that through our own perspective, through our own eyes so dimensionally and energetically so much more is in existence I actually do see angels and I do see lights and orbs and energy Yes. and I have had experiences and my life changed dramatically um, <laughs> I am an angle Yes, you probably are an angel. We just had a comment there. Do you know, just, we all are earth angels to some degree, and I believe anybody doing this kind of work is actually adding their own angelic light vibration into the world because they're bringing light into the world by the positive actions that they're doing. So if you want a bit of help and assistance in helping to bring that forward and work with energies that want to help bring that forward back into the planet, then like I said, I'm doing this workshop next week. It's £35. Proceeds from that will be going to be the Change Trust as well. And basically, I'm also doing another one on manifesting your heart's desire, which is on June the 15th. And that's £35 again, same times, 11 till 3.30. But in that, um, we'll also be looking at our heart-soul connection and how it's really the vibration that we emit that really is the magnetizing force to what we attract into life. Yeah. And also, I'll explain more about the laws of the universe, by which the universe operates mm -hmm. because a lot of things that have been going on in the world have been actually there to take away that powerful information from you and um grandfather's an angel yeah well so we're getting attracted soon. dark city radio to him <laughs> and i must stop as well <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you want to come along, just inquire on the Heart and Space website. It'd be great to see you, and by doing so, you'll also be contributing some funds to the Heart to the actual Be the Change Trust. So thank you so much, and keep planting all the. Be <laughs> We've got too many vibrations going on here. We're just blowing the system. <laughs> Um, but no, I'm a, I'm a big believer in that. I mean, even in my small back garden, um, I've just put a little oak tree there I've got now um, and a little horse chestnut tree that is actually an offspring from a large tree that I grew up with. It was my first tree friend um, and I can feel a lot of um, energies going on there now. And in fact, I've just got rid of my man as well and he had a lot of negative energy. <laughs> so I've been clearing a lot of energy. Everyone's from growing, they're all flourishing. Yeah, actually, yeah. we need to point out tomorrow is a big lunar eclipse. Yes. Not only is the, uh, uh, the planet, um, the moon and our planet Earth and the sun kind of coming into a conjunction where basically we will eclipse the sunlight going onto the moon so yes. you'll get like a big red moon. Yes. But the moon is also very close. It's probably one of the closest times it is to the planet so it's going to look huge in the sky. Oh. So it's a good day to plant some seeds. Good, it's a good day to plant some seeds <laughs> and do things, yes. Yeah. But also yeah. it's a good time for you to really sort of send intentional good, do some good meditation for yourself mm -hmm. because now I believe we are energetically um, hey what's that hey hey yo girls <laughs> <laughs> no but, no uh, you're not Bob I don't no. include you in those comments at all <laughs> but I do believe that tomorrow might be a very powerful energetic day and there's been so many earthquakes going on around the planet yes the sun is really at a real solar maxim of, of magnetic and solar flares mm. and this can mm. create eruptions upon the planet I think there was an eight point to um, earthquake in Russia today, mm -hmm. but there's, there's a lot of movement in, in Mother Earth at the moment. Yeah, it's, it is all, you know, connected, isn't it, actually? Yes. When um, we were listening to the talk earlier, because I'm really into this whole microcosm and macrocosm mm -hmm. thing, and I mean, oh, I didn't mention it at the beginning of the show, normally I talk a little bit about the weather and growing conditions, which have been... Oh, a nightmare this week. I'm just going to build a great big go I think it's hard because I noticed a yes. last year that it'd be dark and really heavy, dense cloud all during the day. Mm. Then come about four and five o'clock, it starts let, getting light again. Yeah. And it seems to be happening again. Yeah. And we so need Abbey to 
Because not yeah. only does it help our stronger bones and everything, but it also keeps us in a good positive mood. Yeah. And That's weird. It's five o'clock. It's like when they finish work yes. and go home. <laughs> go home. And then like, the sun comes trailing, so They're going home to their wives and children and everything, and they're no longer came trailing or doing the harp activity in the sky. And that's where we can get sunshine. Uh-huh. But yeah, uh, you know, I don't know whether there's a, an element as well of you know the weather connected to people's psyche, <laughs> um, and the fact that if people are on a low vibration, that it could cause certain things to happen in yes. the weather. You Have know. you ever heard of um, Power versus Force, uh, Doctor Hawkins? He does the map of consciousness. Hmm. Um, but the good thing is, if people say are in a very low vibration of say fear, anger depression and apathy in a very low mind sort of consciousness of being Mm. those that are of a much more higher more sort of reasoned aware peaceful or loving or just generally just being at peace with what is Mm. that's Mm. called acceptance Mm. that actually is more powerful a ripple of effect which actually counteracts a lot of the negativity yes Um, so actually one of the reasons why I think that's why the sun hasn't come out that's why the sun hasn't come out (laughs) Because it will have an absolute effect upon the consciousness. That's why, actually, though, at the same time, I do believe that through will and force and energy, we also have the power to transform that. Because yeah. if we're all part of it, then we have to be aware of where are we kind of contributing to the yeah. weather. Yeah. So I think we all need to wish for sunshine on back holiday Monday. Yeah, yeah, good idea. Yeah. I'll do a little dance in the yes, garden please. over the weekend. <laughs> But no, I'm a big believer in that. In fact, I get my son to do that because he can suffer from, I mean, he gets very frustrated and can get very angry inside. And I get him to get the tambourine out, yes. shake the tambourine and jump up and down to kind of, and I find that does help, that does clear energy. I do think though with children, because a lot of them are very sensitive and aware. Mm. Is he about 10, 11 years old? Um, well, he's actually, um, he's eight, but he's very sensitive to things. You know, he told, uh, told me that... Um, before he came in my stomach, he was in a temple, yes. and he had to choose what, what um, tunnel to go down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you um, see, a lot of children now that have been birthed in the planet are—it's almost like we are all programs from a. If you think of the consciousness like a big mother computer, yeah. And when each child gets born, it's like they're a new download yeah. into the fabric of the consciousness that exists. Yeah. So it's children like choose their children choose yeah. their parents. Yeah. They also are being born now because they are becoming more sort of genetically modified. I know it sounds big, but they're basically, their genetics are switched on. So a lot of them can actually do telekinesis, very much telepathic. There's many stories of children not speaking for for a long time. Not because they can't speak, but they're being telepathic. They don't Mm -hmm. need to just communicate by that. Or they do remember their previous lives. And you see, when children are born, a lot of them are born with the memory of where they've come from. Uh, they're, not really <laughs> they're, cheeky. <laughs> oh, they're all cheeky on the dark city, so I like it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I was um, quite sensitive to that stuff mm. as a child, and I, I um, you know, in school assemblies and things like that, I couldn't sort of. When I went into, I could feel, you know, and I went very shy and introverted yes. for quite a number of I years. Know, very much like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 A, a school disco or something and all the other children are there like, yeah. and my daughter would just watch everybody else yeah. and yeah. decide where shots go yeah it's funny and I, I sort of it was a conscious effort to come out of it in later years yes. and now I practice it again in fact the bus is a good place for, for feeling energy oh, <laughs> yeah. in fact I had a great experience well not a great experience I was late coming here because I was on the bus and then this really drunk guy got on, he got on with a lawnmower <laughs> and the bus driver was saying, you can't bring that on. I don't know why really, so it's only a fly mower, it wasn't massive, it wasn't much bigger than a pram and then like, but he was really infuriated and he got on anyway, I thought fair play to him but he was really, really drunk and he was like swearing and calling it. I don't even want to say the C word. I don't like it at all. Don't mind saying fuck. He was telling them to fuck off. <laughs> and um, he got on anyway. And you felt the energy on the bus just went like that. Everyone was like, 
it's, uh, you know, it's um, absolutely bizarre. It's about realising, though, that we do have six sense. And it's sometimes difficult if you're really in the mind, if you're very much into the intellect, to go into the heart place, which is often when you feel more your intuition and your body awareness. Mm. But your body will pick up vibrations and feelings. And often when you walk into a place, it doesn't always feel cool. Mm. That's kind of your intuition saying something not right here. Yeah. And often. I think we've lost Narice again. Oh no, she's back. Oh, oh, we're there. Cool. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So basically, just just be aware and learn to trust your own feelings and intuitions. That's a good tip for the moment because there's so much bombardment at the moment of different you know, the television or the different things. I'm sure some of your listeners don't listen to the television much because it's no, much of yeah. its propaganda. Um, but again, it's recognising that just your own awareness and intuition at the moment and watch what nature's doing. Because mm. at the moment, you can get a lot from what nature's doing, how the birds are behaving and different things. And that will give you a clue as to really what's happening around you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I'm... Um getting more and more into foraging really I mean yes. I've always been interested in it um, but you know they're the things that grow and, and more and more as we're fighting against these kind of, I mean the wind this week has just been absolutely rich. the tree came down today oh. really Cassie oh god it's awful I'm totally yeah. 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 doing in one of our main projects is to build our own biodome oh. so, so we can yeah you can come and yeah. work yeah. Yeah. Anybody yeah. want to come and help to our bio We can overcome that problem. We're not always relying on the weather. Yeah. It's the winter time. We can provide food. Yeah. Like for ourselves and for other people. I mean, I think. Organically, we know it's. Yeah. Yes. Oh, hello. We lost you there for a moment. Are you back? Are we are. Are we back? Oh, we're yes, talking you're back. Tonight. It's okay. It's, not... it's okay. We're oh, getting there. Is there. Hello, Felipe. Is he on? Yeah, yeah. I'm oh, sorry. I didn't realise. I thought I was going to just listen to the to the um. <laughs> listen. I didn't realise I could just talk. But yeah, <laughs> I thought I was just listening. But... Hi there. Oh. You're right. Yeah, we're all right. Thanks, Felipe. Are you? Yeah. Are you chatting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you bring me those raspberry plants? <laughs> Oh, they're still waiting for you over here. Um, we, uh, I, I've got actually. I'm hoping to go over one of your Friday sessions. Uh, I've got um, one evening in the next few few weeks. Uh, my kids aren't staying with me, so I'll, I'll quite look forward to popping over and uh, and uh, join your your discussion evenings. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing, Felipe. I can't always get here because I'm doing the show on a Friday, which is why it all happens synchronistically, and I ended up coming down here to do the show. Yeah, it was Lynn. Lynn gave me the idea. Big it yeah. is, see. Oh, see. Our community is more and more forming. It I mean, is. This is what's showing. Yeah. It's coming from a grassroots level, this awakening. Yeah. So it was never going to come from the top down. No, it, it wasn't. It wasn't. I have to calm down a bit. I'm getting too overexcited. <laughs> <laughs> Look what you did to us, boys. You're getting us all excited. <laughs> Well. And I love your daffodils. I was admiring them the other week. <laughs> that all, Is that a euphemism, Lynn? Oh, fabulous. Yeah, fabulous. fabulous. Yeah, they've got a little children's area and a bit of climbing. Yeah. And I've done uh, like a little mound that resembles an old type prehistoric fort, you know, mm. one area. Mm. And there's these daffodils going out of it. Oh, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. I think spring plants like that are about one of the only things that I don't mind if they're not useful or edible or anything. Just seeing those signs of spring like that. You say you know. that, you know, you just give me with March winds that we're having and we've still got blossoms on the trees and everything. Yeah. It almost feels like we have actually 
gone back in a season, almost like it's March now, not May. Yeah. Yay! Except we've got the blue yeah. bells. Except we've got the blue bells, which are only coming May. But you know, the last couple of years, when we have got the summer, our yes. summers are later now. Yes, mm. they are. It's not September, October. I mean, when I take my daughter, we end up being on the beach in October. Yeah. Yes. And you think if you go You're getting 20 degrees in October, aren't they? would go normally yeah. a few years ago. I mean, today was it 6 or 7 degrees? Today, the temperature was something like 6 or 7 oh. degrees. Yeah. It felt like colder than that. With the uh, wind. in fact, I've got my thermals on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. Have you got your thermals on, guys? <laughs> what the bills are, Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 to hit the greenhouses? Yes, well, I, I'm really interested in that idea. I'm hoping to get someone on the show who knows more than me <laughs> to tell me how to do it. But um, I don't know if you've seen, they're quite big in America, rocket mass heaters. So you, you build, um, you can use them to actually heat a home and build um, an oven and a seat around them, like a cob style. Yes. Uh, Stuart, Stuart from Martino Gardens were there last yes. um, week. He knows that. He's, He's just built a... Yeah, they did just build the cob oven. But Northfield yeah. Eco Centre are currently running courses on a Saturday where you can learn to grow food. But yes. one of their workshops is they're actually all going to come together and build an oven as well, and earth oven themselves. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I, if, any, if any of you are interested, actually, we're... Um, with the Cushing oh. Community Garden joint venture with uh, Food Forest Brum, we're actually getting someone um, from... Um, from Swansea, who who builds uh, these called called like rocket stove biochar rocket stoves, and basically they're absolutely amazing. They, there, you, but you, were, you were saying he's getting someone from Swansea to work with Cushinga, the community garden. He works with, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's basically it's it's, uh, it's along the ideas of a rocket stove, and uh, you can adapt it for like an earth oven for a barbecue, but also to heat your house. Uh, and it's very it's minimal minimal fuel uh, but the beauty of it is that the byproduct is something called biochar some of you may have heard of it which you can then feed into the soil so you, you restore the soil whilst you also capture carbon and bury it into the soil so you're helping you know gradually sort of a reverse climate change plus you create fertility in the soil and then you create heat from it to you know to warm your house to cook your food um, so we're gonna we, we can uh, we're gonna advertise it a bit more, but if any of you are interested in coming along, in um, it's at some point in July we're gonna have it open as as for people linked with Food Forest Brum um, to see as a bit of a demonstration. He's gonna show us what he's doing, and uh, I think it's kind of the, one of the things that is just amazingly pioneering. There's a lot of potential there. Yeah, definitely, Felipe. It's quite empowering, really, to be able to you know provide those kind of things for your site instead of relying on in fact that's the one thing that's really annoyed me this week that standing charge thing from energy companies is absolutely shocking 24p a day eon are charging for just right i was on the phone i said so what's that for then and she didn't even know she had to go and ask someone oh it's crazy oh, this is she, yeah and then she was like oh it's my have we lost her narice Oh, yes, you back? No, I do think we've lost her. Yep. Uh, Every time I say that. Go on, girls, focus on the energy. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You get, you've broken through again. Continue. <laughs> Actually, should we bring Nick over and have a little? We'll bring Nick. Uh, could I say? Yeah, Nick, also, carry on. Uh, Anti Monsanto Day tomorrow. Yes. And there's a big march in London. Mm. But uh, I don't know of anything happening in Birmingham. But if people want to go down Bearwood High Street with any. Thank God. So, well, I'm, well, I'm really <laughs> chuffed, Lynn, because um, I, I've been mooching around seeing if anything was happening in Birmingham um, to protest about yeah. Monsanto. And I don't know, Birmingham's hit and miss with that. Well, I'm, I'm not a massive I'm protester anyway. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, and I think the, yeah. the, the actual the plant, well, because you're going to be planting. against Monsanto, he's doing the planting. Yeah, exactly. Resistance is fertile, yes. Lynn. Yes. Uh, 
Yeah. And so, Nick, you're um, sort of uh, being a big push behind this planting, haven't well, you? Well, just I'm, a, well, I'm, I'm just a practical side, but I, can, I, I don't do computers, I don't do all the sort of research, so I just roll my sleeves and get out there. And it's, we've had these opportunities recently, the whole thing with Incredibly Edible, Edible City, the whole course that you ran with Permaculture, it's just opened my eyes up incredibly. And Edible City, I think, was the thing, not just Tom mm. Gordon, but Edible City, Oakland, California, that hour yeah. long web pass was brilliant. Yeah, that opened well, my eyes up. That's... Got me Going. Sorry, yeah. sorry, I'm sorry, really bad sorry. for interrupting. No, no, no. I was, um, it's just I've got a friend of mine's just started an incredible edible Darleston as no, well. Right. It's been a really inspiration, oh, um, oh, incredible sorry. edible for people. Yeah. Uh, Sahara, her name is, yeah, 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 yeah. And she came down to visit us. So it's like we was just saying earlier, and there's a lot of connections going on. Oh. Carry on, Nick. Yeah. No, I'll shut I up. I don't want to carry on about that. <laughs> um, but no, it's, and what happened? It was a, it was curious circumstances where we just moved it on really quickly. There's a sort of taking time by getting funding and the logos and, and then suddenly we had this chance of um, these strawberries that had come up and it was like oh god do something with 300 strawberries that just come in yeah. and, and then I had a chance meeting with this guy in bear with about these pot again just chance just yeah. like uh, what's the chance what's the crack with these pots and then suddenly it was like oh well you can have them all 18 big huge you know three foot planters yeah. so it was like oh well Max we'll marry the strawberries with the planters and we'll get some other stuff and suddenly it's just raced on um, and it's just one of those things that not you manifest them. it's just yeah. happened so yeah. you've got to action it so sleeves are up and off you go yeah. and, uh, and it's great and what, what days you have in the street I, as you know Narisa do the activism which is mm. i.e. stand in the street with yeah. some signs mm. having the having the, um, the uh, sort of you know talking to people whatever and it's been the same with this food it's not about the plant in the way or the plant it's about the conversation and mm. it's not necessarily about the alternative stuff, is it? It's definitely about people uniting, being more people, people connecting, come together, yeah. mm. you know, mm. the change with the impacts. Mm. Mm. It's it's definitely, been, it's, been, it's, been, it's been really good, and, and, and what an enjoyable day! I mean, I know the Sunday, nobody else was struggling to manage. I was it was short notice. I had a day there, and it's 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 you do get the awake people. I mean, mm. the one guy off the grid, awake, didn't know about the groups in Birmingham. Mm. You knew everything. And I've had that happen time, time, time again. Yeah. But then, but then pleased that I was there. And yeah. as you say, you get a community coming, yeah. you know, developing. That's what I love, and that's why I like to strip you know, just look at some other people. Okay, so I got stuff as well. But I'm, I'm not bothered. Whoever choose, choose to be the change, right? It's incredibly edible. Mm. It's, mm. Uh, it's the whole gamut, really, and, and trying to wake people. And it's the global community that's behind you as well. Yeah. So well, it's, all... it's it's quite exciting, really, Nick, because, I mean, we've been trying to get stuff going. There's a lot of people that talk in Bearwood and over yeah. that way about getting things going and getting alternative mm. things going up to a point. Um, but we're trying to get a community cafe set up there, as yeah. I said to you, and get a space oh, wow. for workshops, a space where we can have the community seed bank, because it already exists, it just needs a home. Yeah. I've got a library I can set up immediately. I've got resources that I can do. They're just there, waiting for that. But, I mean, the, you know, I've spoke to the council. They know, you know, they're just, they're not really any help. But it's like, um, so I was saying to Sue, Sue or Sue was saying to me, oh, Nick, doing a great job let's look at it. I know what sometimes I don't accept the praise it's not about that it's every doing stuff Christopher and Wayne setting it up Ian's lot and obviously Lynn just absolutely yeah. know, everybody knows she's so active yourself and I've got to speak up for you as well you know, you've got a reputation for being a doer and that's all going on and, and, and I said to Sue we've got to get the doers together and yeah. not the doers together should we go and put them plants in now after the show? <laughs> <laughs> Can I just mention before I go? Yeah. Uh, Simone's gonna yes, we'll bring some. Well. We'll bring some um, in a minute. I just want to mention uh, be the change trust dot com and heart and space dot com if you want further information on our groups and trips and yeah, 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 yeah. Excellent, nice excellent, Thanks. and Thanks, no problem. Cheers, guys. And Lynn, do you just want to say a little uh, yeah, bit about fluoridation before you? Uh, West Midlands against fluoridation. Because, uh, you know, we've had this so called water, and it's all full of heavy metals like mercury and lead and cadmium. How many people realize what they are drinking every day? Mm -hmm. and, you know, there's people like you trying to grow organically. Mm -hmm. And if, unfortunately, this year we got plenty of rain.
When there's no rain, what do you put on your on your pants? Tap water. Yeah. Tap water. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've done a few experiments with uh, growing, put my vegetables in uh, tap water, and I've put my vegetables in mulberry water, and I've put my vegetables in other water, in pond water. And, you know, uh, the tap water, they grow, the leaves, they grow a little bit, and then they die. Mm -hmm. and you, use the other water and the pond water and they, they grow oh, wonderfully yeah. and they yeah. don't Actually, so what's that doing to our bodies? Uh, well, it's really surprised me, Lynn, you know, because I stopped using um, fluoride toothpaste yeah. and um, oh, use yeah. an alternative now. And I actually had a withdrawal, and it really surprised me. I wasn't expecting it at all, you know. For the first yeah. few days, I felt really grumpy after stopping using the <laughs> Really, You know, yeah. absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. And, I could, and I've noticed, I know it is that, because occasionally all the people in my house use toothpaste with fluoride yeah. still. And if I've run out, I've had to use it. And I've noticed the kind of shift. You well, know, I notice when I use uh, fluidated toothpaste and with the tap water, mm. uh, I get infection in my gums. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's also uh, it's that Orwellian thing. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, the opposite. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So uh, you know, I, I hate rinsing my my mouth with water, and I think, well, you know, what's happening to my body? Because after all. Your mouth is the first stage of digestion. Yeah. Of, yeah. of the food. Now, anything you put around your teeth and around your gums yeah. is going into your throat. Not necessarily to the hole at the back of your throat. It's going through your glands. Yeah. And going into your blood system. And, okay. and you, you watch your group on Facebook. Call, or have you got? who is down in Southampton helping to support them uh, because, Excellent. you know, Southampton Health Authority is trying to bring in food aid and all that. It's supposed to be down to local authorities now. Be very influential, yeah. and we had was really lucky to have Girl Against Fluoride come over from Southern Ireland, yeah. and she gave us a great presentation. And one of the things they've discovered is that fluoridating the water uh, is against 31 EU. So they're in breach of 31. So that means in Birmingham they're in breach of 32 because our water is nearly double what the EU recommendation is, which is 0.7. And in Ireland they have dropped it to 0.7. In the States they've dropped it to 0.7. They're not doing anything in England. Why not? You know, it's like, you must insist on keeping, you know. <laughs> anyway, thank you for listening. Right, but yeah, thank you. Well, I'd just like to bring in Simone N Nada now, who um, gave a wonderful, wonderful talk um, at Be The Change here before we came on air. Really interesting. Um, she talks a lot about, um, well, actually, no, should be the transformation, <laughs> not the change. Uh, so if you want to say a few words, uh, well... Whatever you like, really. <laughs> well, this, uh, my name is Monada, and uh, we talked about transformation earlier, really, right? Yes. Yeah. What do I want to say about myself? Um, really, I want to. I want to be the change, and I want to be the transformation that people see in their lives. So that's my purpose to, to do this work. And, um, I, you know, basically what I find is we have people that go through their day-to-day -day lives and they think they're a slave to them, so things happen to them, and want people to see that they're not, they're not the slave, things don't just happen to you. Uh, these are, they come out of choices that we've made in our lives. They come from um, actions that we've taken. And when we start to take responsibility for those choices and actions, life shifts for us because then we become, we see that we're the master. So that's the purpose for this work. And once we realize that we're responsible for everything that's happening, now we can actually command it. I don't call it control because control um, implies that you have to because in permaculture practice you would observe a piece of land ideally for a year before you actually work on it um, and interestingly in permaculture circles a lot of people now are talking about 
um, applying that to yourself and not just the land that you're trying to grow on and I mean obviously everything is connected anyway so um, you know that whole observation process you were talking about um, so, what was it the, the big I, I call it the four aces and the big O yeah and you're right you know people when they when they're having a situation in their life and now you know we're talking about permaculture but um, because I, I work on the other side, but it does. It all flows. We 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 are a part of everything, mm -hmm. and everything is a part of us. And we have to realize that. And we have to be responsible for not only the food that we eat, the air that we breathe, our thoughts. Everything is affected. So eating uh, eating the natural foods, it does affect the way that you think. It affects the way that you feel. So it's a, it's an important aspect of of our day to day life. Um, speaking of the observation, people feel that if there's a change that needs to be made. The moment they observe something that's not working or it feels painful or, or uncomfortable, they, they feel like the change has to happen immediately. Like, I, I, I'm in pain right now and I need the pain to be gone the next second and that's where our medic medical system comes in. But what we need to realize really is that, number one, the body has everything within it to heal itself and eating the right foods uh, is a big part of that. But along with eating the right foods, giving the body everything that it needs, emotional nourishment. We can actually give ourselves emotional nourishment. Um, having the positive thoughts. But it's not just about faking yourself out and saying, you know, when you're in pain, saying, no, I'm not in pain. Your mind can't, your mind can't heal you. You have to go to that higher vibrational space, which is your soul, and everything, healing, great relationships, great careers, all the wealth that you need, everything that you need, everything that you really as a soul d desire in this life to feel complete comes from that place. It comes from having, it, it comes from that vibration. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I'm sorry, but observation is a big part of it. So going through the, uh, and since you brought it up, the observation of the four aces, um, it starts with observation, but it doesn't go to action immediately. We don't just take action right away and to change something. You go through the process of observation, and then you become aware of the problem, which is the, sec which is the first ace. The second ace is um, acknowledging it, that actually it's there, otherwise most people want to just deny it or run away from it. The third ace is accepting it and not re not rejecting it, not resisting whatever is happening. And the fourth ace is action. It has, things have to go in that sequence and I think you find that. Yeah, yeah. Well, as I said, that, I was very interested to hear you talk about that as well because that is the kind of way... <laughs> You know, we look at it in permaculture. I mean, it's quite simplistic in, in gardening terms because, I don't know, for example, if you put a shed on your most fertile patch and then you can't grow anything on there because that's where all the best nutrients are, but you put a shed on there and you've, you know, you put an action in place without first observing, you know, it's a simplistic way of explaining it. But, um, you know, you can't, it's a lot harder to undo these things than work them out in your own time. Um, yeah, and it's funny, actually, that's quite interesting for me personally. I, I was always quite rushed in, in, um, in my younger years, and I, I've got quite a lot of energy, and I never knew what to do with it in those days, which is oh, why I got into trouble a lot. <laughs> and then, for I ages, I held it in, I thought I had to hold it in, I didn't realise that it would flow. So, um, yeah, yeah, I actually really enjoyed your talk today. Yeah, I've totally gone off on a tangent there now. I've lost my no, it's very, I think it's interesting for your listeners to see that, just because, see, when you, when you change or if there's a natural flow and you block it, mm. It blocks, there's an aspect of your life that's blocked, it's your creativity that's blocked. Mm -hmm. So I think what you're talking about is really being able to channel it. So what you're doing now is channeling it into a positive enterprise. Yeah. And not only are you helping yourself, because you're... Oh, look, we're on the countdown now. So go, have you got some bad links you'd like to give out? Have you got a web, some links, a website? I, I do, and, actually, uh, thank you for asking. Um, our website right now, we just took on, we, uh, we created the Divine Life Project .com. Um, It's going to be up, I think, within the next few weeks, but my, my personal website, simonanda.com, is up now, and they can get more information about me, and I think the big 
Oh, um, and to spell out my name, it's Simone, spelled S-I-M-O-N-E, N-A-N-D-A dot com. And that's my email address as well, SimoneNanda at gmail dot com. Um, so I also want to mention the workshop that we're starting. Uh, if anybody's interested in this work that I do or getting more information about it, we will be starting an online workshop in uh, on June 15th. And it really does, it helps you transform every aspect of your life, whether it's money, career, relationships, whatever it is that's not working. If anyone want to know more about it, call us or contact us. Excellent, fantastic, yeah, that's great. Thank you for that. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Yes, I think I might uh, might join you for that online. If you give me the links as well before we go. Right then, we're on the countdown for one minute. Well, I just want to thank everyone else who's still here. Thanks, guys, for letting me come down today and do the show from here. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Shirley. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, yeah, everyone's been really welcoming and um, yeah, I'll maybe come down and do it from here. Another time, thanks for jumping on as well, Felipe. Is he still there? All right, and uh, yeah, we'll see you again next week. Bye.